Good morning. Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we'll be talking about my new bike, the Cannondale Evo 4 Lab 71. I'll be talking about why I decided to get it. And this is my third ride on it so far, so I'll be also be talking about my first impressions of it. So maybe before I start talking about this bike, a quick catch up on my bike situation at home. So if you're new to this channel, I used to ride a Tarmac SL7 and a Dogma F12. I still have the F12, but two months ago I sold away the SL7 because I wanted to try a new bike and I needed to make space for it at home. One of the things I wanted in my new bike was a lightweight climbing bike so I could take it around the world for travels, especially if I want to go overseas to ride my bike more. And one of the new bikes in the market that fit that category is the Cannondale Lab 71, which replaces the previous Super 6 Evo. I was also considering the Factor 02 VAM, which is also another super lightweight bike. But one thing that bothered me was that the Factor was already three years old. So I'm a bit concerned about it being outdated soon, which is why I decided to get a newer model. I saw a good deal for the Dura-Ace 12 speed online and decided to go ahead and order it. In the end, I tried Guan's bike and I was sold by it because it was so comfortable and I really enjoyed riding it even though it was only for about 10 minutes. Unfortunately, the Singapore dealers didn't have stock for it. But I kind of needed to build the bike quickly because my next trip is at the end of June. I quit my public hospital job in early May. So I decided that I'm going to use these few months to travel a bit more, ride my bike. Especially since it's summer, it's a good opportunity to make use of the good weather in Europe. So I had to go elsewhere, which explains why I ended up in Johor Bahru getting my frame. And I got it built there. Getting it from JB doesn't mean that it's cheaper. Actually, I think it's about the same, if not slightly more. I realized that the pricing for the frame set in Singapore is one of the lowest in the world. When I looked up the frame set online, it was around 6.5k without handlebar. But in Singapore, they are selling it for 5.3k. The bike is kitted up with Dura Ace Di2 and the Shimano Pro Vibe carbon handlebar. I'm using the Ascent wheels for this bike because they're lightweight and as I said in my previous video, I plan to use these pair of wheels for my travels. So this lightweight bike will pretty much be my travel bike. At least that's the intention of it. So I don't use up too much of the baggage allowance when I travel. It also needs to be comfortable because if I'm going to ride overseas, the roads are probably not going to be as nice. And also, I'm thinking that I will be doing some long rides, maybe six hours a day. So I definitely need something comfortable. So you might be thinking that this bike is a bit too lightweight and there might be a trade-off. A lot of times lightweight bikes have this issue where they are a bit flexier because less material definitely means less stiffness. But so far, this is my third ride on it and I haven't found that to be an issue. When I power out of the saddle, I don't feel any noticeable flex. When I'm going down descents, it holds the corner very well and actually, I find that the geometry is quite good for descending as well. One thing that currently annoys me about this bike is the headset and the BB. So it's using a threaded BB which is not supposed to squeak, but for some reason, the headset and BB have been squeaking. Since 
since I got the bike. Uh, sometimes the seat post as well. But I think this could be just an issue of not enough tightening or not enough grease. So probably quite an easy issue to solve and not really a big concern at this point in time. I've also done some adjustments to my fit on this bike. The handlebars are now 38cm when I've used to previously ride 40cm. I've turned in the hoods a little bit and I've also changed the stem to 90mm when I previously used to use like 100 or 110. And the effective top tube is 528 which is 7mm shorter than my F12. So now I'm a little bit more upright and I think this position is more comfortable. I've also used 160mm cranks on this bike so I'm sitting a little bit more over the pedal which I feel kind of helps in the engagement like when I'm pedaling a circle it feels like I'm able to get the full circle in instead of having dead spots. The other thing I really like about this bike is the child speed Dura Ace. The shifting is very crisp and also very fast. So that was one of the reasons why I decided to sell the SL7 because after a while the SRAM sort of slowness started to get to me and I felt like I wanted to use a Shimano group set when I travel so I decided to try this 12 speed one and it hasn't disappointed. The brakes are also really nice to use like the modulation as well. When I was doing research for events in Europe, I found that there was this event called the La Mamotte Grand Fondo in France which does three big climbs, total of 5,000 meters of elevation and it's 177 km long. There are three climbs, one of which is up Dues and I figured that if I have so much climbing to do, I definitely need a nicer gear ratio which is why I expect the 1134 cassette for this bike. I've kept the front as a 5236 because I felt like I also still need the bigger ratios for the fast descents. Overall, what I wanted to create was a bike that was versatile, good for me to travel with, comfortable to ride with, yet not so flexy such that I would lose power or lose efficiency in the climbs. And so far, I would say that based on my first impression, I've definitely uh, been impressed with this bike. Having previously ridden the SL7 and F12, I don't think that this bike is in any way inferior. And aside from the little issues like the creaking which I feel like can be easily solved, I don't really regret my purchase and I'm really happy with this bike. This is not a sponsored post by the way. But Cannondale, feel free to send me a frame to ride anytime. And with that, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and as always, stay tuned for the next one. Bye bye!